Week one is here and we have a full slate of games to choose from. How excited are you? And now if you are looking for an edge, you are in the right place. Let's not waste another second of time. Let's dive in. And we'll begin with the best wide receiver play on the slate. He is the highest projected receiver and it is Tyreek Hill at $8,200 this week. You should expect ownership on Tyreek. It's a nice game environment, but look at this right here. He has the third best overall matchup against this secondary of the Chargers. And now here's a few things. In his career with Tua as the starter, Tyreek averages 28.1 points points in 10 and a half targets per game and in 11 career games as an underdog with a 50 plus point total like it will be in this game week one he averages 23 fantasy points and over 100 yards so depending on the type of lineup you're building your stacks if you're playing miami the Chargers, yeah tyreek is a priority even at 18 to 20 percent owned. and another priority in this game specifically is another receiver who's not picking up a lot of ownership because of the way he's priced at 7300 keenan allen he is currently as it stands right now leverage wise the second best wide receiver play on the slate again this can all change throughout the week as things change and that will all be updated on patreon in the dfs blueprint but what you're getting out of keenan allen is a top five projected receiver even though he's 10th in pricing and he's below 10 percent owned as of right now he's fantastic leverage off his own teammate mike williams who is underpriced at 5700 but picking up ownership now keenan allen is getting older and last year we saw his efficiency drop off just 99th at beating man coverage but he also did enter the season with an injury and that kind of limited him for the first month of the season but in nine healthy games last year allen averaged 10.7 targets and although my he has a great secondary keenan allen is going to play in the slot and avoid studs like xavian howard now let's jump to the running back position where one man is being disrespected below 10 percent ownership despite being a 10 point favor with a 27 point team total with the baltimore ravens it is jk dobbins who is finally healthy and playing behind a top five offensive line not only that but he should see a new role this year because he's expected to earn more passing down volume with new offensive coordinator todd munkin and he was a nice pass catcher in college dobbins averaged three receptions per game over his 42 college starts and you could easily argue he's in the best game environment like we said a 10 point favorite nine and a half as you can see here on some places depending on the book and a 27 or so point team total in similar spots in his career Dobbins averages nearly 14 fantasy points per game so we'll move from one great running back play to the next and now this guy gives me some concerns because he might be a touchdown reliant player especially if he starts picking up ownership but Brian Robinson at just $5,100 a seven point favorite against the Cardinals who they ranked dead last in defensive line last year so they were already a poor run defense last year and they lost three key pieces this offseason Zach Allen Mark Marcus Golden and JJ Watt. Now, Brian Robinson was this team's number one running back last year, over the final 11 games, averaging 19 points per contest. And when he was a favorite, he actually averaged 12.6 fantasy points on over 16 touches. So it's a nice role for B Rob. Now let's move to a interesting and appealing quarterback. And he's very fairly priced this week at just $6,700. Tua is in the perfect spot. Look, he is in the best game environment on this slate, 51 points projected, and he's a slight underdog. So that is the best, most ideal spot for a quarterback to throw close to 40 plus times. Tua averages 24 fantasy points points on 39 passing attempts and now Tua faced this secondary last year and it wasn't good just 12.6 fantasy points to charge your secondary especially now if they're going to get healthier entering this year should be solid again but that's just a one game sample after Tua was battling some concussion symptoms to that point I want to prioritize this stack and when I do I want the double stack of Waddle and Tyree now let's move into a sneaky receiver and if you enjoy this content if you appreciate it and find it helpful make sure you hit the subscribe button and double check that you're subscribed because this is a new channel from the previous years and that receiver I want to talk about is just $5,900 Chris Goblin. I mean this was a guy who was constantly a seven thousand dollar receiver and i know tom brady's no longer there but even without brady in his career goblin averages 73 receiving yards per game and now yes his quarterback is baker mayfield but baker loves targeting the slot and goblin led all receivers in slot receptions last year he finds himself now in a good matchup against the vikings who allowed the second most explosive plays to wide receivers last year and speaking of the vikings i like taking a shot at their rookie wide receiver first round pick jordan addison out of usc at just fifty one hundred dollars because he's expected to play week one and now some people are saying oh maybe kj osborne's gonna start over and limiting Jordan Addison snaps and now this might be the case but we're getting a cheap first round wide receiver who's talented at like two percent owned because of this and whenever Addison does take over and it very well could be week one because he did have a solid camp he'll take Adam Steele and roll and Adam Thielen last year had the second most routes run in the league that's a lot of great opportunity for the rookie so there's a chance we see 30 plus routes out of Jordan Addison against the Tampa Bay secondary that's not as good as it once was and more specifically on this matchup Addison will get to avoid the guys who are still solid and Jamel Dean and Carlton Davis on the outside Side and he'll get a matchup in the slot which is more beneficial for him so those are some five thousand dollar receivers who are definitely underpriced now let's move to this next quarterback now i'd expect this qb to kind of be the chalk of the week but we'll have to see and it's sixty nine hundred dollar justin herbert because he does have the highest total on this slate pushing around 27 points in that great game environment against the dolphins now herbert has played in nine healthy games in similar spots with a 51 plus point total and he averages 23 fantasy points and 270 passing yards look there's plenty of great ways to stack him i prefer a keenan allen 
Allen and maybe a Gerald Everett stack, and I want the Miami receivers coming back. I also am interested in this next guy, but if the ownership remains high, like I'm seeing right now in the DFS blueprint, you can get it. Industry best price down below right now at ownership projections. A whole lot more going out this week is Jamal Williams. He's cheap at $5,100, but he is picking up a lot of ownership, but the projections do look nice on this fellow. Look, Alvin Kamara is suspended. The rookie Kendra Miller is injured. He's going to see the full workload. And when Williams starts, he averages 21 touches and 17 fantasy points. Now, another running back who's interesting, maybe in season long, we've had some concerns, but for week one right now, this is his role as a favorite with a nice total. And that is Travis Etienne at $6,900 coming in a little bit lower owned than Williams and some other players in this range. And look, it's a nice price point for him as people go to the wide receivers in that range. He'll be facing like a league average defensive line from the Colts led by DeForest Buckner. And this is important because the Jaguars offensive line is suspect at best. They lost Juwan Taylor this offseason. They're going to be replacing their tackle position now with a rookie. So this is a suspect offensive line. PFF has them ranked to start the year based on personnel 26th out of the 32 teams. But we're still projecting ETN to earn the red zone work and goal line work in this game. C15 plus touches and in similar spots running back C nearly 14 to 15 points. Let's stick with the running back position and go all the way up to the top where another guy's picking up a lot of ownership right now. Not as much as I thought he would, but Derrick Henry at $7,800. Look, he's the second highest projected running back right now in the DFS blueprint. Coming in around 10% owned, I expect that to rise. And this is a tougher matchup against the Saints. But honestly, the matchup doesn't matter for Henry because over his last four years, when you take his rush attempts and then add in some receptions, he's averaging over 320 touches a year. And that includes in 2021, as you can see here, when he was injured and missed like nine games. So 24 touches per game the last four years, that's crazy. And it doesn't matter that he's a three-point underdog because Henry averaged 19 points on 20 touches per game as an underdog last year. Now, before we move on to maybe the best tight end play of the week, I want to let you know about the DFS blueprint. It is on Patreon with nearly 1,600 members. You can see right here, nearly 1,600 members have access to it. And now there are a couple of different options. You can just check them out. Link down below. You have the DFS blueprint. You scroll down here. You're going to get a bunch of stuff. Game notes, ownership, a podcast exclusive only to you guys playing my exposures, the best way to attack the slate on Sunday mornings, an optimizer, and a whole lot more. And if you are interested in the player props tool and all of the optimizers for every single sport, you can check out the Hall of Fame tier as well. Now, if you want to join those nearly 2,000 people using the tools right now, scan the QR code on the screen or click the link in the description below to join our team. And now we move to that tight end position as promised and teased earlier. And look, $6,200, the most expensive guy in the slate. This is not expensive enough. This is priced like the cheaper-ish wide receivers, even though he's clearly the number one option on his team in Mark Andrews. So there's some concerns about an injury. We obviously have to monitor those, but as of right now, it seems like he's going to play. There's question marks about so many of the guys in this team. Odell now on the injury report. Bateman coming off of injury. The rookie, what's he going to do? Well, we know what Mark Andrews will do. And now he's a big favorite with a nice 26 point team total. And in similar spots in his career, Andrews averages 18.3 fantasy points on 7.6 targets. So from a stud tight end, we move to now a stud quarterback and it's Joe Burrow, who's in another nice game environment here at 25 and a half point team total. He's expected to be a full go week one. And now in five similar spots in his career with a 25 and a half point team total, Burrow averages 27 fantasy points and over 300 yards per game. And when you factor in that over 300 yards per game in DraftKings scoring, he's averaging 30 fantasy points. And the price point is still fair on him at 7,100. Yes, Jamar Chase is expensive. It might be a little bit difficult to get T. Higgins, but we're going to talk about some cheaper options from the Bengals that make this work pretty easily. And then on the opposite side from the Browns, I mean, you can run it back with the tight end and Joku. That looks pretty appealing. There's always Nick Chubb if you can pay up for it and a couple of receiver options. And now one of those cheap options for Joe Burrow is Irv Smith Jr., who's $3,600. This is basically just hoping for a touchdown, but this is a really athletic tight end who, when we actually saw him as a starter, when he's been healthy over his last 16 games, Smith has finished as a top 10, 12 tight end 50% of the time in those last 16 games. And then $4,100 Tyler Boyd is just a great option. He's projected for nearly 11 fantasy points or more in the DFS blueprint right now. And the guys priced around him, I mean, Mac Hollins, Josh Palmer, these guys are just disrespectful compared to Tyler Boyd's upside with his team and his talent. Now, last season was a bit of a disappointment, but if you scroll through all his fantasy points, these are his game logs, you'd see that he actually had six top 25 finishes and he had a couple of spike weeks, a 20 and a half point week and then a 29 and a half point. We'll call it 30 with the DraftKings bonus, 155 yards. So he does have upside in this offense still. And now speaking of a player who has some upside, that could be put into a nice stack. Why not Gerald Everett at $4,300? If you're playing the Miami to a stack, he's a cheap run back. If you're playing Justin Herbert, he's a cheap way to get a double stack in there at again, just 4,300. Because in 15 career starts with Herbert, this guy averages 10 fantasy points and nearly six targets per game. That's good production for a tight end. And now we're going to head into a running back who not a lot of people are liking, but I do this week. But I want to let you know about Vivid Picks. If you don't know already know about them, you can check them out because they're running a ton of great promotions right now, especially this right here. You can earn up to a $100 bonus with your first time deposit. You can just check it out. It is linked down below and we are going to be having some plays as well throughout the next couple of videos they're having a couple of free promos as well where basically if a player gets one yard you win so make sure to take advantage by scanning the qr code or clicking the link in the description below now that running back i'm talking about is 6500 dollars right now the ownership is kind of up in the air it'll probably settle out the next day or two but i think he's not going to come in too highly owned even though he's a six point favorite and that's alexander madison and look
look, he's going to face a Bucks defensive line that has Vita Vey and Shaq Barrett coming off of four seasons. This is not the same unit as like two or three years ago. Now, we mentioned a six point favorite. He is a six point favorite. He has the fourth highest team total on the slate. And last year, in similar environments, Dalvin Cook averaged 17 fantasy points in this same role. Now, I'll be honest with you, I don't think Alexander Madison is anywhere near as good as Dalvin Cook. I actually think Ty Chandler can push him for work throughout the season. But for week one, he is going to be the guy as he was rested in the preseason and paid this offseason. And now, speaking of dudes paid this offseason and going to be the guy, wasn't paid as much as he hoped, but Josh Jacobs, $7, $7,700 against a defensive line that has added some pieces like Zach Allen and Frank Clark from the Chiefs in this Broncos unit, but they are still a big question mark. And now you get Jacobs coming in off of a year where he led the entire NFL in opportunities, over 400 opportunities, 24 per game last year, still in a contract year, by the way, it's a one-year deal, so there's still motivation here. And this is a division rival, so he played the Broncos twice last year, and in those games, he averaged 30 touches, 27 fantasy points, and 168 yards. Now, he is a four and a half point underdog this week, but that doesn't matter because last year, he averaged 23 points as an underdog back to the wide receivers a guy who's always been disrespected in season long fantasy a fair price point here at $6,700 for Tyler Lockett look he's just three percent owned as of right now there's a lot of upside here first off he's going to be facing arguably the worst secondary probably is as of right now in the NFL yeah there's no more Jalen Ramsey here this entire secondary is going to be bad you have Witherspoon you have Kendrick those are some of the guys that he'll see the majority of his time against and the Seahawks are favorites with the fifth highest team total on the slate around 26 points in 11 similar spots in his career Lockett earns 14 and a half fantasy points now this next Next guy is in a range that I love. We've already talked about a player in this range in Jordan Addison. We'll talk about some more in here, but for right now, let's talk Deontay Johnson, who's another player like Tyler Lockett disrespected this offseason because he scored zero touchdowns even though he had 147 targets last year and his quarterback seems to have improved he led the entire preseason in overall pff grades and looked good in camp and in those games they scored a touchdown on every single one of his drives now the reason Deontay has a lower price point and also lower ownership as of right now is because the matchup against the 49ers now there's no doubt about it that this team definitely has a top 10 secondary probably overall with their defensive line and linebackers the best defense in the league but he's gonna actually have a nice matchup he'll get to avoid Avery Thomas and their best cornerback Ward on the outside. He'll play in the slot a lot of the time against Lenore, which is a solid or at least a better matchup. And the matchups don't really matter. Like Derrick Henry at the running back position, you just still get volume out of Deontay Johnson. The last three years, look at his targets. He's averaging 153 per year. So no matter the matchup, he's getting looks. And speaking of a guy who's going to see some looks, probably seven plus targets this week in this same exact price range, Debo Samuel at 5,500 on the opposite side of this game. Heck, I mean, last year he averaged 14 points when healthy with Brock Purdy. And now there's some speculation. Maybe George Kittle misses, meaning more routes for Debo. And maybe not even even more routes, just more targets per route, his target rate. Now he is slowly gaining some steam in the DFS blueprint, approaching 10% owned. If this starts going to like 12 or 15%, he's probably in a void, but for right now there's leverage. A guy who will definitely be a leverage play, maybe not the greatest, but he has upside. Juwan Johnson's not coming in with any ownership. He's just $3,900. Nobody wants to play this game overall in terms of a stack with the Saints in Tennessee. So all the pass catching options are going to be somewhat lower owned, if not really low owned. Juwan Johnson, look, he has touchdown upside. He has Derek Carr as his quarterback. And Derek Carr literally made, obviously Darren Waller, a great athlete, but also Jared Cook a top 10 tight end in both years and a top five for one of those years we'll go back to the wide receivers here and i'm not as crazy about this guy because it is a lower team total this team is expected to run but it's drake london who look 11th in wide receiver efficiency last year and the matchup against carolina is actually not bad this team had an exciting secondary to start last year but he'll face a lot of dante jackson which is a by far winnable matchup a lot of 77 catch rate last year and jc horn started his rookie year really good last year but then got injured who knows how he'll be now so at 5400 if we get london coming in around 10 percent on like he is right now he makes for a solid play and at $6,200 we get a running back in Cam Akers who's expected to face the Seahawks defensive line and their run defense that PFF right now has the 30th ranked unit to start the year and this matters because Akers offensive line was bad last year and might get even worse this year but the good news is that he should see all the volume close to 80% of the snaps his only competition is Kyron Williams who might play some third downs as a slower undersized back it'll mostly be the Cam Akers show he's an underdog in this game but as an underdog last year over his final six starts he averaged 18 fantasy points now let's discuss another tight end then it's Dalton Schultz he's more expensive this is kind of the play that everybody's definitely going to Tyler Higby at 4800 as like the main stable piece for the Rams as underdog but Schultz at 4600 probably going to come in one percent owned this week with a rookie quarterback that's going to be in a tough spot with a bad offensive line assuming Schultz doesn't have to block more he should see a lot of checkdowns. so these are the fellows who stand out the most for one reason or another on this slate I'll be updating all the tools projections ownership optimizer all that this weekend and our Sunday live show so make sure to sign up for the blueprint with the QR code on the screen or the link in the description below if you want to join the 1600 or so of us now I appreciate you beautiful people tuning in. If you made it to this point in the video, be sure to hit the subscribe button so you can see all the content we have coming out in the future weeks.